Hi, everybody. Welcome to the No Depression Sessions. We're in Nashville right now at Jan's house. Thanks to our friends at AEA Microphones with Mary Gaucher. Mary, it's great to see you again. It's good to be with you again. You reminded me we've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. Five years ago, man. That does not sound right at all. Five years ago when New York City was I don't know, pretty normal, more normal than since post-pandemic, that's for sure. It's really, really changed since pandemic. But I remember we did this and uh, uh, the results were extraordinary. So I'm happy to be working with you again. Outstanding, man. I cannot wait to make another lovely one. You've sounded great in Soundcheck. And now we're about to share two of your songs with our audience right now. Um, we're going to hear one from the, the title track from the new record. And yes. we're going to hear one from earlier in the catalog as well. Uh, what do you want to do first? I'm going to start with uh, Dark Enough to See the Stars. There we go. At the bottom of my tears On the backside of my fears At the center of the pain I hear my voice call out your name Days go by, nothing works I can't believe how much this hurts And I don't know where you are Dark enough to see the stars Dark enough to see the stars Dark enough to see the light In an ocean black and deep In the middle of the night As I hold on to your love Like those lights from up above I have drifted out so far It's dark enough to see the stars child is born to die, but the soul is born to fly, under heaven's canopy, tiny diamonds you and me, lightning bulbs inside a jar. Dark enough to see the stars Dark enough to see the stars Dark enough to see the light In an ocean black and deep In the middle of the night As I hold on to your love Like those lights from up above I have drifted out so far It's dark enough to see the stars I've been carried out so far Dark enough to see the stars Excellent. Thank you, Mary. You are welcome. 
Do your so does this record? Do your records in general? Do you tend to find that there's uh, like a cohesive through line to them? Are you writing individual songs that could make sense in any context? Do you tend to write cohesive holes um, as an album? And I mean, was this last record one of those two things, or how do you tend to do it? Do you see in in units of album, units of song? Yeah, you know that's a great question, and I think the way it works for me is I try to write w what's moving me right now. I try to go to whatever is uh, creating deep emotion in me right now and write about that. And then once I put it all together and I have 10 songs that I'm proud of that move me and put it on a record, it turns out there's almost always a through line, but I'm not aware of it while I'm writing each song. But it, it, if you look back at it, I mean, most artists probably don't need to write a memoir. It's in our body of work. We write our life and we write the world that we're living in and, and what's, what's affecting us. And um, it, it happens uh, in a chronological way. So you can sort of like listen to people's records they made when they were younger and, and see what they were like in their 20s. And, you know, like with Dylan, look at what he's doing now uh, and, and see uh, the elder uh, in his work. But I think it goes song, 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 and then what holds together, um, generally I overwrite. I don't write just 10 songs for a record. I'll usually write 20, and then there's 10 that I think are the ones that are worth bringing out into the world. So there's a lot of stuff uh, I haven't put out into the world because it's not up to the standards or it doesn't have the emotional impact that I'm hoping uh, to bring to every song. It's always interesting how that emotional impact changes over time, too, because it could very well affect you, the, you know, in a very visceral way one time and then six months later because of, you know, the song hasn't changed, but your relationship to it has and it might not hit or, you know, maybe one that you've pocketed has actually actually is the one that is meant to be on that record. Absolutely. And songs reactivate themselves in a lifetime. Um, you could, uh, as a songwriter, let a song go and not play it for years and years and then a couple of decades go by and that's the song that's calling you from the past because you're living that thing again in a different way, but it's relevant again. Uh, there's just, we, we're, I think we're all kind of going in circles in a way. It's a round planet, we're going in circles and it, it, it feels as though songs come back around. Uh, and uh, I just never know which, which one will, but it, it, it's been my experience that, that they do, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing your music with us here today. Um, I'm a fan of your work. I really appreciate it. We're being you know, six feet away from you in the room doing it. It sounds oh, fantastic. Um, and there's still one more song in this session. What do you want to do next? Yeah, thank you. You know, I've been fascinated lately with recitations. Um, I, I just uh, I love the whole idea of having a melody and then reciting uh, poetic language over the top of it. Uh, so this is a story I wrote about a guy that I found through his obituary, and he was a, an American hobo, and he fascinated me, and I tried to sing it a lot when I was writing it, and it just never wanted to be sung. It was meant to be recited. So this is a recitation about steam train Maury Graham. He was the king of the hobos. Old steam train Maury died last night. His wife Wanda by his side. He caught a westbound out of here, hopped the hirons to the by and by. They say he jumped 10,000 trains. He rode a million miles for free. Helped out at VA hospitals and penitentiary. Dandy Dave and Rusty Nails and Sweet Lady Sugar Cane. Dead Eye Kate and the Baloney Kid raise a cup tonight in Steam Train's name. Senators and congressmen, puppets on a string. Among windswept vagabonds, old Steam Train was the king. He was the last. the hobo kings he was the last of the hobo kings
bums, they drink and they wander around. Tramps dream and wander too. But a hobo, he was a pioneer and he preferred to work for food. He knew how a nation was doing by the length of a sidewalk cigarette butt. Born with an aching wanderlust embedded in his gut. Hounded, beaten, laughed at, broke, he was chased out of every town. With his walking stick scepter, with his shredded coffee can crown, he was the last. the last of the whole bouquet. Freeman or hobo, Steinbeck said, and he paid them cash. The stories he bought from them helped him write the grapes of wrath. But boxcars been sealed for years, and trespassers do time. Railroad yards are razor wired, and now hobo ends a crime. So here's to you, steam train Maury. Hold that westbound tight. As you ride off into history, the last hobo, the last ride, he was the last of the hobo kings. He was the last of the hobo. Hmm. All right, Mary, thank you. It's always, always great to see you. I appreciate the music and uh, best of continued luck. Dark Enough to See the Stars is the current records. Thanks for the music from that. Thank you for Last of the Hobo Kings. Um, that, what, what's the line about um, he knew, knew the health of every city in the nation? By the length of a sidewalk cigarette butt. That's so good, man. It's like, Isn't it never, great? Yeah, never ever considered to you know, think about that relation to economic circumstances, but it makes so much when sense. When times are good, like, you can yeah. smoke a half a exactly. cigarette and flick it. When times are hard, you're going down to the filter, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hobos pay attention. Wow. <laughs> Well, thank you for the stories. Thank you for the thank music. You. And we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.